Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. We may not be able to change every circumstance in our life, but we can change our outlook. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I cannot stand here and say that I'm sorry I was abused by my dad. Enjoying life begins with a choice. The first choice is to believe that all things that have happened to us can work out for good. No matter what they are, all things that have happened to us, all bad things, unpleasant things, unjust things, unfair things, can work out for good to those who, number one, love God, and number two, are called according to His purpose. And let me just simplify that. Who love God and who are willing to do what He shows them to do. I'll never forget a girl that attended a conference that I did many years ago, and it was a conference where the, it, it was, happened to be a ladies' conference, and the ladies were all sitting at these round tables in this big banquet center. And um, three, four sessions we had, and at the end, the lady came up to me, and she said, well, I found out what my problem was this weekend. And I said, what's that? She said, well... She said, I've been abused and I've had a lot of bad things happen in my life. But she said, as I sat at the table, it seemed that God had placed me with several other ladies who had had almost identical backgrounds as I've had. Isn't it amazing how God will set you up sometimes? And she said, by the end of the weekend, this is what I found out. They're all free. Everything that God told them to do that they did he also told me to do, but I never did it. We're expecting a lot these days, and we're not willing to do much to feel like that we've earned it or deserved it, and it's not good for people. The only way you can ever really appreciate anything is to know what you put in to have that reward in your life. Nobody will ever know what this ministry means to me. As close as Dave is to me, nobody but God will ever know what this ministry means to me because I know what I've had to go through to get from where I was to where I am. We may not be able to change every circumstance in our life, but we can change our outlook. I know it doesn't make any sense, but I cannot stand here and say that I'm sorry I was abused by my dad. I don't know how God works it out, but he is God and he can do some very unusual and amazing things. And somehow or another, he's worked it out for my good and for the good of a lot of other people. And I know that I have a better life now than I would have if it wouldn't have happened to me. So we can all stop feeling sorry for ourselves because we got a bad start in life and just say, God, here, you take this mess. Let me see what you can do with it. God gathers up the fragments of our life that nothing be wasted. Here's a good statement for you. Nothing good happens accidentally. Joyce Meyer said that. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I want you to see these scriptures. It's just important. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. So let, let's just apply this to our message tonight. What if he said, I've set before you the opportunity to think good thoughts or bad thoughts? If you think good thoughts, you're going to have a good life. If you think bad thoughts, you're going to have a bad life. Now you choose which way you want to think. Is anybody in the room convicted that you need to get before God and start making some progress in the way you think? Half of you? Well, I'll get the rest of you. Just wait. <laughs> Romans 12, 21, I love this. Do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome and master evil with 
To me, that's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. You overcome evil with good. I didn't get the devil back for what he did to me by going out and hating everybody. I got him back, and I get him back every time I open my mouth and preach the word to help people. You're not going to get anybody back by hating them, but you can sure make a dent in the wickedness in the world by getting up every day and seeing how you can be good to everybody that you come near. Can I just throw this out there for good measure? I don't mean it to be rude, but get yourself off your mind. I mean, it's really just not all about you. <laughs> and it's really just not all about me. You know, we're going to believe something, so why not make it something good? <laughs> You're going to have to fight a good fight of faith. It's a fight. We're in a war. The devil's always going to be the devil. <laughs> But instead of dreading it and resenting it, and get excited about it. I got a purpose every day. Every day of my life, I have a purpose to not let the enemy control my thoughts and to not let him dictate what I'm going to say. I don't have to talk according to my circumstances. I can talk according to the Word of God. Every day of my life, I have the challenge of loving people that aren't necessarily all that lovely. Come on. Anybody can go to work and hate everybody that's not nice. But we don't need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You don't need to come to this seminar to do that. You can go do that without any God factor in your life at all. But when God comes in, it changes things. At least it's supposed to. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Strip yourselves of your former nature... Put off and discard your old, unrenewed self. That literally means stop acting like you used to act before you became a new creature in Christ. Well, I've tried, Joyce, and I just can't. You know, it's not about trying. It's about believing God and trusting Him and fellowshipping with Him and spending time in the Word. And God does the work in us that needs to be done if we learn how to go to Him. Put off your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, constantly, oh, I wish it didn't say that, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. I wish that it said, and one time only in your life, you have to have a good attitude, and after that, everything is going to go good. No, but we have to do this day after day after day after day. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm excited. <laughs> A couple of you looked at me like, <laughs> I ain't saying that. And put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image. Godlike and true righteousness and holiness. So I look at these scriptures like a sandwich. You've got 22 and 24 with 23 right in the middle. 22 says, put off your old life. Let's just make it really simple. Stop acting like you weren't saved. And over here, start behaving the way God wants you to. But the bridge, how do I get from 22 to 24 is 23 and having your mind constantly renewed and a renewed attitude constantly, and that's the answer. That's the answer. The way to have this victory of living the new life that God has given us is to learn how to think the way God thinks. And it's not an automatic. 
I get up some mornings, and I mean, before my feet hardly hit the floor, I start having some of the craziest thoughts. I mean, like, just stuff that makes you want to think, hello? <laughs> and I actually, I will talk to myself and say, Joyce, we're not going there. Been there, done that, not going there. I know it's the enemy. And see, the enemy is going to try early every morning to get your thoughts, because if he can get your thoughts early, he can get your day. And you know, in the mornings, you're kind of groggy and sleepy, and you know, it's like, oh, do I really have to start fighting the devil already? <laughs> but if you begin to look at it like a challenge, it can actually get to be fun. Always think more about what you do have than what you don't have. <laughs> How about if we finish Charlie's story? Would anybody like to do that? You want to know what happened to good old Charlie, don't you? I made him up, you know. There is no, but he fits a lot of people. An unwillingness to count his blessings is one of Charlie's biggest problems. I like this statement. A man named William Arthur Ward said, God gave you the gift of 86,400 seconds today. Have you used even one of them to say thank you? <laughs> Amen. One of his biggest problems was he had an unwillingness to count his blessings. I think we would all agree that he probably wasn't thankful for much, if anything at all. All of his blessings were clouded by negative thinking. Instead of thanking God that he had a job, he resented not having a better job. Instead of realizing his parents did their best for him, he believed they didn't love him enough to provide better opportunities. He compared everything about his life to those who had more than he did, but he never realized how much he had, how much more he had than a majority of people in the world. What happened to Charlie in the long run? Well, he did lose one more job and was on the verge of losing another when a Christian man he worked with invited him to go to church with him and his family. Julie already attended church regularly, but Charlie had always refused to go. This time he said yes, and it turned out to be just the right thing at just the right time. Charlie had finally been miserable long enough, and he was ready for a change. Has anybody in the building been miserable long enough and you're ready for a change? See, if you were expecting me to come out and give you some magical word over your life tonight that would turn all your problems around, <laughs> I'm sorry, and actually, sometimes when people try to do that, it irritates me. God does many, many miracles, but the greatest miracle that he does is to change a human being. And that happens as we study and get to know him and stick with it and don't quit and don't give up and we watch and see what God can do in our life. He was finally ready for a change. Is anybody watching TV right now ready for a change? <laughs> when the opportunity came at the close of the service to receive Jesus, he surrendered his life to Christ. You're going to have that opportunity here in just about 15 minutes. And some of you that have not made a decision yet to receive Christ as your Savior, if you're Charlie, then tonight is time for Charlie to get saved. Charlie took a bold step and joined with many others in saying yes to Jesus. Gradually over the years, and I, we, we just might as well tell the truth, gradually over the years, not overnight, gradually over the years, Charlie learned about the new way of thinking and the new life that Jesus offered, and he did change. He and Julie went on to have two amazing children. Charlie held on to his job and was even promoted several times. I love stories with good endings, don't you? I wish every story had an ending like this, but sadly, we know that every story does not have an ending like this. 
Mind, mouth, moods, and attitudes. Wow. They sure have a lot to do with our life, don't they? How do your thoughts affect your outlook on life? If you need a breakthrough, what can you do? First of all, you believe. Just believe like a little child, you believe. I believe. You're gonna believe something, it might as well be something good. I believe that something good is gonna happen in my life. That's a good place to start. I believe that God has got a good plan for me. I believe that my future is gonna be much better than my past was. I believe, I believe, I believe. Devil, do you hear me? I believe. Amen? I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Then start asking God for what you want and need. You have not because you ask not. When you go to God in Jesus' name, you're presenting to God all that Jesus is, not all that you are. None of us deserve God's help. That's what's so wonderful about the new life in Christ. And in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, it says, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Keep on asking, and you'll receive. Keep on knocking. God is your friend, and he wants to meet your needs. Keep asking him, asking him, asking him. And if you're not getting what the Bible says you can have, then ask God to show you the truth. Yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You know what I say all the time, it's not the truth about Dave that'll make me free. <laughs> Take responsibility for your life. Take responsibility for your life. And I can still hear it, well, it's not my fault. Okay, I'm good with that. It's not your fault. <laughs> but once again, you partnering with God <laughs> and beginning to do what God shows you to do is the only way to fix the problem. Somebody else is not gonna come and fix it. Only God can fix it. And he's not gonna just do it for you. He's gonna do it with you and through you. Amen? Spend lots of time with God. You say, well, what do you do when you spend time with God? You just do whatever. You can sit and do nothing. You can read. Above all, you talk to him honestly. It's not so much what you do when you spend time with God that's important. The thing that's important is that you gave him the time. Do you hear me? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Some of you, honestly and truly, if you would just get up and spend 15 minutes every morning with God, your life would change so radically that it would be unbelievable. Stop trying to work God into your schedule and start working your schedule around God. Yeah. Psalm 91, one, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can come against. Do you see that? Look at that. He who dwells, lives, and remains in the secret place of the Most High he who spends time with God on a regular basis. He who recognizes that his presence is with you and in you all the time. He shall remain stable. You need emotional stability? This is where to get it. You feel like you're about to go over the edge? Go get somewhere in a closet, in a bathroom, anywhere you can be by yourself for two minutes, three minutes. Go lock yourself in the bathroom stall at work if you feel like you're about to rip some other employee's head off. <laughs> and say, God. <laughs> okay, Joyce, breathe. 
Revolution. Give me the strength, Lord, to go back out there and act like you want me to act. Come on, you got to fight for your life. We got the cutest letter from somebody in Russia. I preach in all these other countries in their language, and so, I mean, I don't know the languages, but they translate them. And uh, so, I, mean, I speak about 93 languages, aren't I amazing? And, you know, even though the translation is good, a lot of times what we say still doesn't make any sense to them. And so, this person wrote and said, could you please tell me where the secret place is? I only have a barn and a hut. <laughs> I love it. So he who dwells in the secret place. Or, oh, it was a closet. She said, tell me, can you tell me where the, was it the closet? Anyway, you get the point. You know what, the Word of God, I want to put a scripture up. And, you know, I'm going to get about 10% of this message done tonight, but I guess you're getting the point. Hebrews 4.12, let's look at this scripture. If we really take the time to look at these things, they're amazing. For the Word that God speaks is alive and full of power. You know why many of you worked all day and you traveled to come into this building and sit with thousands of other people? to listen to some woman <laughs> tell you to take response. You know why? Because the Word of God is alive and full of power. Every Word of God is like a power pellet. It has power in it. That's why I have believed for years and I am still believing that while the word is preached, people will be healed and filled with the Holy Spirit. While Peter was preaching, people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't have to stop and even have a certain prayer. While the word was going forth, people were healed. They were filled. They were touched. They were delivered. Demons had to flee because the word of God is full of power. You know, the Bible says that we're to meditate on the Word of God. And another way that you could look at that is chewing it. Because to meditate just means to roll it over and over in your mind and to even mumble it and murmur it quietly. It's like chewing your food. You swallow your food whole and you don't get any nutrition out of it. But the more you chew it, the more you break down the nutrients in it and the more it gets in to your body. So I can quickly read a chapter every day and it doesn't mean anything to me and I can think, oh, I'm a good Christian. You know, I got my check mark today on my read your Bible calendar, but it didn't do me any good at all. But you could take Psalm 91.1 and you could meditate on that for a whole week. And all of a sudden something would fall from your head to your spirit. And what you're going to learn is every time I'm in trouble, I'm running to God. Because he's the only thing that's going to keep me stable. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. Do you know the word of God is operating on you right now? It's sharper than a two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, the soul and the immortal spirit of joints and marrow. The word of God is sharp enough to get into our lives and divide every motive and to show us exactly what's right and what's wrong and what to do about every situation. You do not have a problem that God will not lead you out of if you will listen to him. Don't be like the woman who God told her everything he was telling everybody else. The only difference was they did it and she didn't. Whatever he says to you, do it. John 2, 5. They wanted a miracle. 
And Jesus' mother turned to the people and said, whatever he says to you, do it. What a simple formula for a successful life. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Whether you agree or not, do it. Whether it feels good or not, do it. Whether you think it's a good idea or not, do it. Even if it doesn't make any sense to you, do it. Well, I think it's safe to say that the Word of God teaches us what God thinks about every area of our lives. And He wants us to learn to think the way that He thinks so we can have the best life that He wants us to have. You know, it's really one of the foundational things that we need to learn if we want to have any kind of real transformation in our lives. ఉండరండి ఎప్పుడు చూసిన ఈరోచనాలు జ్వరం అవుతుండే డాక్టర్ కాడికి వెళ్దామంటే పైసలు లేవు ఇంకా పిల్లలు అట్నే పండుకొని ఉంటారు వి హవ్ బీన్ ఏబుల్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దిస్ విలేజెస్ త్రూ గవర్నమెంట్ అండ్ త్రూ సమ్ లోకల్ ఫాస్టర్స్ సో దిస్ వెల్స్ వాట్ వి ఆర్ డ్రిల్లింగ్ త్రూ జాయిస్ మైర్ మినిస్ట్రీస్ నో వి టేక్ ప్రాపర్ కేర్ టు ఫైండ్ వేర్ ఈస్ ద గుడ్ వాటర్ through a good water diviner it will take about 3 uh, days to go to that village and drill the bore well to give fresh water to the villagers na pillal kuda badik botaru నేను కూడా పొలం పనికి పోయి బాగా సంపాదిస్తాను ఈ గ్రామంలో బోర్ వేయించడం ద్వారా ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి జీవితంలో ఎంతో మార్పు వచ్చింది ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి అవసరాలు తీరుతున్నాయి కాబట్టి యేసు ప్రభు దేవుని తెలుసుకొని సంఘంలో సభ్యులుగా చేరడానికి ఎంతో ఆరాట పడుతున్నారు మాకు ఇక్కడ ఒక బోర్ వేయించి మా ఆత్మీయ దాహాన్ని తీరుస్తున్నారు మేము పాస్టర్ ద్వారా ఆ నిజమైన దేవుని తెలుసుకొని ఈ సంఘంలో ఆ యేసు ప్రభుని ఆరాధిస్తున్నాం Word je wel eens bevangen door negatieve gedachten? Kun je ze niet meer van je afschudden? Laat je gedachtenwereld geen geestelijke schroothoop worden. Joyce Meyer heeft hierover een boek geschreven. Kracht in je denken. Want onze gedachten bepalen wie wij zullen zijn. Bestel het boek Kracht in je denken. 12 power thoughts voor de strijd in je denken nu. Via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel... 026 20 22 100 
ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en je krijgt regelmatig exclusief een video van Joyce op jouw Facebook... met korte, inspirerende boodschappen die voor nieuwe impulsen zorgen in je dagelijks leven. Dat en meer bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.